name is uh, David Zulu. Uh, I'm a resident of Chingola. I live in uh, Nchanga South at uh, number 8 15th Street. Um, uh, I'm here for the first time. Uh, I came here via an invitation from uh, uh, Brother Smart Kasonde. He's an associate of mine, uh, business-wise. Okay, I did some work for him before and um, we got closer together and he shared that he comes to this particular uh, ministry for his uh, services and so on. So I, uh, you know, I, I heard about this ministry many times, I think since 2021. Yeah, I heard about it from 2021, but I've never been here. I think the few times I've passed here, I've never been sure if there was a church here. But uh, I just used to hear people talk about it. And um, it turns out that um, indeed this is uh, <laughs> it's almost like the synagogue, Church of All Nations, basically. <laughs> it's like that one has been, um, what's the word? It's been exported from Nigeria all the way into Zambia. And uh, everything looks just like it. <laughs> so anyway, coming back to my situation. Um, in 2020, I had a heart attack, um, and it turned out that um, it was due to some other, some problems, some spiritual problems, which I knew about, but I wasn't sure. But God revealed several things to me in, in dreams. But you know, when you're being when God is revealing things to you in dreams, they're not 100% clear. So I took a few clues here and there, uh, but then uh, I got stuck. I didn't know where to go. Uh, so when I had the heart attack, there are some people who were praying for me in Kitwe and who actually had a dream when they were interceding for me. One of them had a dream that I had died and um, uh, they, they rushed to see me and they found me, me in the bad situation. So they took me to Kalulushi to Apostle Joseph in Koma where he prayed for me because the Apostle there is a, is a family friend and uh, he, he helped me out of that situation. Um, but since 2020 uh, to date, uh, I've had some struggles uh, and those are to do with business. So uh, I was trying to stay afloat because I had a f quite a number of debts and a lot of people had disappointed me um, during the year 2020, especially the period when I, was, uh, when I had the heart attack. So eventually, uh, I sort of got on my feet and started doing a few things and things started working out. But I was never having a, a solid breakthrough for all the work that I was doing. So my work was always, uh, you know, not co incomplete, so to speak. And it was a bit frustrating. Well, not a bit, quite frustrating. Uh, on the back of it, uh, this year, uh, I had several projects and um, things looked uh, promising, but then they were very slow. There are a number of people that owed me quite a lot of money and um, I lost the contract as a result of the money which I was owed because I couldn't act. So things just fell apart. So this year, um, when I returned from Lusaka, uh, it was Smart who came home and he said, look, uh, I need you to help me out. So I did some work for him. And then eventually he said, no, I'll, I'll, I would like to involve you in some of my projects. And so as we were getting involved, I was also busy here and there doing other things. So in the process, I fell ill. Now, how I fell ill is a, a strange situation. Uh, why do I say this? Uh, I had a dream when I just returned from Lusaka. Um, I had a dream, and that dream, uh, there was a giant man that appeared, although I couldn't see him physically, but I could see shoes which were like size 15 or size 20 shoes somewhere in the corner of the yard and in my mind it registered that there's a giant here and so as i turned around to signal to my father i wanted to signal to him to say there's some strange shoes here uh, it turned out that uh, i couldn't talk to him because this giant grabbed me from behind and grabbed my ribs in my rib cage rather and started squeezing me and lifting me up high that was in the dream. So when, that, when he squeezed me, I was, so, I was squashed, my ribcage was so squashed that I couldn't breathe. And I woke up from the dream, just like that. So I woke up to pray. I prayed for about an hour or so, 
and I was very uncomfortable. I was wondering what was this about? Who is this giant man that is sneaking up behind me and grabbing me and squishing me out of life? I was a little bit worried, but because I prayed, I was assured that no, everything will be okay. Now, as it turns out, later in the morning, around about 10 hours, I started feeling pain in my chest. The same pain I had when I had the heart attack. Uh, what I'm saying happened two weeks ago. So for two weeks, I've had this problem and it was deteriorating. Uh, my, my left side was in constant pain, my back and my left arm as well. It was in constant pain. I couldn't hold the fist properly. Now, as you can see, I can open and close without any uh, issue. Uh, and everything was in pain. And I could see that slowly my life is ebbing away again. And so this resulted in me explaining to Smart because Smart came to me a few times. We had some assignments. So he came to me a few times. And, um, you know, I explained to him, look, I wasn't feeling well. And I'm not going to be able to do some work for him. Um, but then he encouraged me, he said, no, you please come to church, come to our church, come to our church. He kept on telling me, and this is more than two weeks ago. And so um, I told my wife about it, and um, she said, yeah, we should go. I think we should all go at some point. Uh, but then I was getting concerned because my situation was getting worse. Uh, because now my leg, uh, if in fact it was just on, on Sunday, my leg started now aching from my ankle to my knee and then from my knee to my hip. So the pain was just in intensifying by the day. So I told Smart on Monday that mm, one way or another we have to go. So he says, no, you come on Wednesday, there's a prayer line and everything else will be there. You just come organize, get ready. And so I've been praying about this every day, 3 a.m. every morning so that you know, I, I really want to be free because a lot of things are held up because of not being free. Oh Lord, we cry, restore our altars again. Yeah, we cry, restore our fire again. Oh, restore, restore our love for you again. Restore, 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 yes, we cry, restore. Restore, restore our love for you again. Oh, judge, return, return to the love again. Oh, restore, restore our fire again. Oh, restore, restore, restore. Holy Ghost, restore, 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 uh, oh, restore, restore our fire again. Oh, restore, restore our prayer lives again. Fellowship of the Spirit again. Every 
restore, restore our love again. Uh, oh, restore, restore, uh, restore, restore, uh, oh, restore, restore, restore. Thank you. Okay, we thank God. That is Jesus for you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. God, God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for setting me free. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, you know, discovered as we were going through a brief counseling, and as I was sharing with the, uh, one of the counselors at the beginning of the pr before the prayer line, uh, I shared a lot and he brought a lot of insight into where the origins of these matters would be. And I do recognize that uh, I am a Christian, I've been a Christian for a long time. And I know quite a bit about uh, the spirituality of issues. But uh, I, I kept on asking myself the question, if I've been free before, why should I be free? Why should I be afflicted again and again? And uh, I realized that uh, where I come from, I was the first person to become a Christian and in the entire family. And I've been basically holding the family, that is my entire family, not the married family, but my, um, my father's house, so to speak, if I could put it that way. Uh, literally praying for everybody to get saved, everybody to be delivered and so forth. I've been the forerunner for that. But uh, I was told that if you are somebody in that particular position, you are a major target for the devil and he will not sleep until he, he brings you down. And indeed, uh, testament to that is the dreams that I had. I had several dreams that pointed to the fact that uh, I was about to be killed again because uh, I, I started dreaming my late mother and I started having dreams about going to the cemetery and it was very all strange to me and I was asking myself I do recognize that's a spirit of death lurking around but I'm asking myself why why but then I realized that maybe I did drop my guard down here and there maybe I didn't spend the quality time I needed to spend in the presence of God and uh, you know when your guard is down you're angered by a simple thing the devil finds a way to slip in and then he, he afflicts you and to me I've learned well now I've learned that uh, you have to be in God's presence as the as uh, the uh, our father was speaking in front there he shared the message about staying in God's presence all the time doing everything in God's presence you can't be without God's presence and expect to be victorious in anything because there are so many loopholes that we encounter so many tricks that the devil uses to sweep us off our feet I've, I've, I've been delivered and uh, all the pain I had in my chest is gone all the pain I had in my leg is gone in my arm in my hand in my back the headache I was feverish everything is gone I'm completely free I thank God for that and I praise God for the minister he has used to 
uh, and for this particular ministry that God has used for my uh, total deliverance again. Well, I'm very happy and delighted to the fact that uh, everybody here was able to receive me very well in a brotherly way and uh, you know I feel very free. There's liberty here, there's freedom and uh, there's God's presence in this place. One thing I have to say is uh, they always say that uh, the pudding is in the eating. Eh? There's that common English phrase whereby you have to behave a bit like a Thomas, a doubting Thomas. If you doubt that God's power does exist, come, come and experience it for yourself. Instead of just being told and then you're just saying, ah, no, maybe this, may. no, the power of God is here. The presence of God is here. People are being set free. You will be left behind. Don't be left behind. My encouragement to you is don't be left behind. Don't suffer unnecessarily. Come here and experience God's liberating power.